I'd love to, so it seems. We are those whose dreams have all deserted. We've changed our face, we've changed our name. But no one wants you when you lose. Don't give up, cause you have friends. Don't give up when not be. Hello and welcome to the April issue of Crimea Torch Song, the video version. I'm Piers Ford and we've just been listening to a rather unusual take on Don't Give Up, which is, I think, a song most of us would normally think of as a, uh, a Peter Gabriel, Kate Bush duet. Uh, but as she tends to do, being adventurous in her song choices and absolutely fearless in her commitment to them, Betty Buckley, who we've just been listening to, one of the great voices of the modern musical, has torn up the rules and with astonishing effect. It's one of several sit up and stare at the speaker's moments on her new album, um, Story Songs, which uh, captures live performances at the Segerstrom Center for the Arts in Costa Mesa, California, and New York's legendary Joe's Pub. I've written a lot before about uh, Miss Buckley's pioneering spirit uh, and the way particularly she inhabits her material and her trust in the lyrics to tell the story without any pointless vocal excesses. As the track we've just heard suggests, if you buy this album expecting just another blast of Broadway, you're in for some surprises. Not least, Betty Buckley sings Radiohead <laughs> with a searing interpretation of high and dry. But while she does find room for the, the traditional Broadway standards, uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein, Stephen Schwartz and, and um, Kurt Weill are represented here, there is always something of the left field in the arrangements or in her subtle shifts of her vocals. For example, she finishes the New York set with a tribute to Elaine Stritch and an upbeat, almost ferocious, I'm Still Here, reviving memories of her appearance in the 2015 Follies concert at the Royal Albert Hall, which in truth was uh, an uneven affair, but uh, in which Buckley and Anita Dobson really stole the show. Rather than handling it as the survival anthem, it's tended to become these days, she takes it back to its roots as sometimes jaded, sanguine distillation of the essence, the very essence of show business. My favourite track though, and one which reveals Betty Buckley's storytelling gifts in all their glory, is Old Flame. Not the familiar standard, but a new song written for her by Joe Iconis. It's a fabulously twisted, funny torch song which culminates in disaster and it's utterly contemporary with its stark warning about the perils of relying on Google Maps to track down old lovers and a spot on fleeting impression of Oprah Winfrey thrown in. Here's how it all begins. <laughs> I'm waiting for a man, I am sitting in his place It's been 40, 50 years since I last saw his face I used to pray that he'd come back I'd hold a photo to my chest I would whisper filthy poems The doctor said I was obsessed Well, from a scorching encounter with an old flame to the youthful dulcet voices of Sound of the Sirens, Abby Martin and Hannah Wood, uh, they hail from Exeter in Devon here in the UK, but they've already developed a, a wonderfully cohesive, mature sound which will hold its own on the global stage of top quality modern pop music. This is showcased on their debut album, uh, for All Our Sins, 
uh, and their voices blend in shimmering guitar-driven arrangements of songs written from the heart, exploring the bruises, knocks and sadnesses that mould us all from the moment we're born. And of course, those moments of soaring hope without which the world would be an even tougher place. Despite the sometimes somber subjects, there is a zest and optimism which shines through these modern ballads, making them accessible and forward-looking rather than just introspective. The voice, for example, takes the welcome buzz around mental health and turns it into a creative, image-laden exploration of the topic. This is an album which wears its influences, um, which they claim uh, include Bob Dylan, The Carpenters, uh, and Joni Mitchell, just, just to, for a few. Uh, it wears those influences lightly. Um, these two troubadours are clearly set on carving out their own territory, and For All Our Sins is certainly an auspicious debut. Here's a taster from one of the tracks, Together Alone. I feel your absence in the light. Only you can make it better Wishing away these dusty days Just know we're all in this together Push through and see your work Find faith in all that's cursed If you believe it, so will we And you can live out all your dreams Well, from country-tinged existentialism to something I can best describe as Ema Sumac meets Americana in the three-octave voice of Anna Coogan. Anna Coogan comes to us from Boston via the Mozarteum University of Salzburg and the Pacific Northwest of America. Somewhere in that influential progress, she also found time to work as a fisheries biologist in Washington State and Alaska. As you'll have gathered, this is no ordinary musician, and the lonely cry of space and time is, in fact, no ordinary album. It's a sweeping, arresting exploration of the state of the world. It combines ecological, political, and social concerns in a tumultuous, gothic, operatic experience with pedal steel guitar accents. That might sound like an acquired taste, but if you're intrigued by vocal inventiveness and the blending of diverse musical influences, you'll certainly find much to absorb you here. Here's an extract from the swirling apocalyptic vision of Burn For You, with Coogan's vocal easing in like grey slick before soaring skywards with crystalline stratospheric assurance. Personally, I find it mesmerising. In case you hadn't noticed, it's Eurovision season, and with the contest looming, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about Patricia Cass's new album, uh, an eponymous album. Uh, Patricia Cass has been one of France's biggest stars for nearly 30 years now, uh, and that's more than long enough to have uh, a certain degree of faith in the pulling power of her own name. I first came across Patricia Cass during a working visit to France in 1990, uh, and the video of Les Mannequins d'Osier uh, from her second album, Scène de Vie, was a permanent fixture on the television. I became fascinated by uh, her jazz and blue-tinged chanson, uh, delivered with a hint of Dietrich-like huskiness. 
By the time she represented France in the 2009 contest, uh, she was long established as a singer in the PF mold, um, and she had a substantial international following, um, which uh, helped her stately performance uh, to result in a dignified eighth place. Um, and to be honest, though, the song would probably have won hands down uh, if she'd taken part 20 years earlier. This album does find her in similarly assured form. Uh, it offers a succession of polished, expertly crafted chansons, full of complex, subtle emotions, uh, which occasionally break the superficial surface calm. These days, she's very much, as one of the songs suggests, Madame Tout Le Monde. Disappointment and loss are never far from the scene, uh, and they add to the sense of an artist at the peak of her powers, who is now bringing the wealth of a lifetime's experience to her interpretation of some of these turbulent lyrics, never more so than on this simple piano ballad, Mar de mon amour. Marié avec le vent et prendre le soleil comme amant avec les nuages dans un tango, mais le dimanche prend du repos. Finally, in the catch-up slot, we come to Songs of Separation, a record that was actually released early in 2016, but has only just won the 2017 BBC Radio 2 Folk Best Album Award. Songs of Se Separation is a collaboration between 10 of the most celebrated female contemporary folk artists in England and Scotland, exploring the different facets of separation, personal, political, and ecological. It's an album of multiple textures, in so many respects, of course, uh, a celebration of the female voice, but it's also a resonant, bold statement for our times. The issues are timeless, and it does seem invidious to single out one participant, uh, but here is, if you like, leading the charge, um, Eliza Carthy's Cleaning the Stones, just to give a taste of the extraordinary talent brought together by this entrancing musical project. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back next month with uh, another selection of listening recommendations. A moment ago, we were cleaning the stones, and I turned. Oh, dear.